So I'm going to cheat at Wordle. So if you're an honest person that likes Wordle, stop watching the video now. So I'm going to start with the word raise. Okay, I've got R in the right place and I in the wrong place. Uh, so the next word I'll try is Robin. And I've got it in two. As you can see, that's a bit better than how I usually do. So you're probably wondering how I did that. Okay, so rewind into the start of the video. I've got an app here that was hidden from view in the first run, and it's telling me to try the word raise. I tell it that the R was in the right place and the I was the right letter in the wrong place, and it suggests the word Robin. I put in Robin and I win. So let's have a look at how that app works. Okay, so here's how it works. Imagine the answer we're looking for is Apple. If I try the word prize, I'll get this result. P is a good letter, but in the wrong place, so it gets colored orange. And the E at the end is the right letter in the right place, so it gets colored green. Now I'm going to try every five letter word that I know and imagine what would happen if I tried that. I'm going to organize my list of words in a tree. Each branch of the tree represents a different result that we get back from Wordle. So here the word prize and prone are grouped together because they both have right letter wrong place at the start and right letter right place at the end. Now because there's a lot of five letter words, the apple tree ends up being quite big. I'll repeat the whole thing and build trees for every five letter word. My favorite tree is the shallowest, the one with the shortest, longest branch. That's called minimaxing because we're trying to minimize the maximum length branch. My favorite tree's word is raise, so I'll try that in Wordle. Wordle will then tell me which branch is the right one, so I'll forget about words in other branches and repeat the whole process using only the words in this branch. I'll keep going until I'm down to a branch with one word, and that's our answer. The first thing I need is a list of five letter words. If we go into Wordle and view the source, uh, if we scroll down, there's a script. I think it's, it's this script here. If we click on that, we can see the code to Wordle. And if we scroll down, we can see there's a big list of words in there. Now the list of words is in two parts. The first part are common five letter words, which are candidate words. I think these words are actually in order that they get presented day by day. So if you really want to cheat, just make a note of the order and you can uh, try the tomorrow's world word and get it right first time. Uh, there's another list of words which aren't so common words, but they're accepted as guesses. So what we're going to do is cut and paste these and save them into two different files. So I've made two files, all words and candidates. They're just literally those lists, comma separated in quotes. And then the whole code is done in four different classes. Result, Dictionary, Wordle Solver and Wordle Solver UI. And we'll look at each one of these. So first let's take a look at result. So result is just an element array. Uh, it's a five element array and an element is either a miss, a letter or a hit. So it's an enum. Uh, a miss is a black square, uh, which is a letter which is does not appear in the right answer. A letter is a letter that does appear in the right answer, but in the wrong place. And a hit is a letter in the right place. So the element has got a constructor, it's got get letter, and then it's just got standard hash code equals and two string. That's our result class. In next, the dictionary class. This is really the main class of the application. Uh, when we initialize it, we read the two files. We read the candidates file into a candidates list and the all words file into an all words list. They're just array lists of words. And there's the code there to read them in. So it's um, splitting the list by comma and removing the quotes and adding the words to the 
list there. Then we've got three methods that we're going to implement in a minute. Check word that gets the word or result for an attempted word if the correct answer is answer. So that's going to get our result for the word attempt if the correct answer is answer. The get word method that's going to do the what we saw with the tree. So it's going to find the word with the shallowest tree in the remaining set of words. Now the remaining set is going to change when we call the next method apply result. So we start off with all the words in the list in the files. And when we apply a result, uh, we take the result here and we remove any words from the list that don't match that result. So we'll implement those in a minute, but let's just have a look at the other classes first. So word or solver is the main class. That's just going to build the UI that we'll look at in a minute and the dictionary, and it's going to make an attempt. And what an attempt is going to do is it's going to call the get word method in the dictionary to get the current word, and it's going to call attempt word in the user interface with that word. It's also passing the user interface the candidate size and the tree depth, which it's getting from the dictionary just to update status labels. And then the UI is going to go do its work and call back process result. That's going to apply the result in the dictionary, which is going to reduce the list of words and then make another attempt. And that's pretty much the main loop of the application. We look at the user interface. We've got color specified. So a miss color is black a letter color, which is right letter, wrong place. That's orange and a hit color, right letter, right place is green. So I've done that just to match what Wordle does. Then we've got a list of buttons representing the letters and we've got a submit button and a couple of status labels for candidates and tree depth. Now the attempt word method, this is going to set the letters in the buttons that represent the letters. Uh, it's going to set the background to the miss color. If there's only one candidate left, it will set the background to the hit color so that we see it in green because we know it's the correct answer. But it's going to set the background of the buttons to the miss color usually. So that's black and it's going to set the letters to be the letters that we specify in the word list. Then the action listener on the button. If we currently color is miss, we'll change it to the letter color. If the current color is letter color, we'll change it to the hit color. If it's a hit color, we'll change it to the miss color. So we're really just toggling through the colors there. And then the submit button, the action listener on that is going to build a result made up of result elements depending on the color of the button if it's the hit color we'll build the result element element hit if it's a letter we'll do it element letter and if otherwise we'll do it element miss so we'll return the result that we've put in in the user interface which is really what we found out from wordle and then we'll call back process result in solver that will then make the next attempt In the check word method, we're going to make a list of result elements five long that we're going to use to build a result. We're going to make a list of missed characters. We're going to loop through our attempt word and take the character at each index of the attempt word. If the answer, if the character at this index for the answer matches this character, we're going to mark it as a hit in the result element array. If it doesn't, we're going to mark it as a miss and we're going to remember the miss character. Once we've found all our hits, we're going to loop through our miss characters. We're going to loop through a word. And if the result elements at this point is currently marked as a miss and the character at this index in the attempt is the miss character, we're going to mark it as a letter in the results elements array. Finally, we're going to return the result. So there's our check word method.
our get word method we're going to remember our min max tree depth and our best word we're going to loop through all of our words we're going to make a list of tree depths so this is for each branch in the tree and that's going to be a result and the depth of the branch the max tree depth we're going to initialize to zero then we're going to loop through each candidate word we're going to get the result for that word and then we're going to say if we've currently seen this result before in our branches in our tree depths array we're going to get it and we're going to add one onto it otherwise we're just going to save it as one now we're going to look at max tree depth and we're going to set it to the maximum tree depth that we've seen so far or this tree depth of this branch so we're going to remember what the max tree depth is after we've been through all the candidates we're going to say if max tree depth is less than the min max tree depth i'm also going to add the condition here that if it is the same but candidates contain the word then i'm going to set min max tree depth to be max tree depth and i'm going to remember the best word then i'm going to save the tree depth so it can be used in the status labels in the ui and i'm going to return the best word so that's our get word method So finally our apply result method that takes an attempted word and the result it's going to loop through each of the candidates and it's going to call a check word method with attempted word and candidate and if it doesn't match the result we're going to add it to our words to delete method then we're going to loop through our words to delete method and re remove the words from the candidate the reason we do this in two loops is so we don't change the array whilst we're looking at it so that's our wordle solver now i'm just going to play it one more time i'll pretend the word is apple so we've got the a but in the wrong place and the e in the right place we submit we've now got the a in the right place the l in the wrong place submit and call a is in the right place l is in the right place e is in the right place and apple so it doesn't always do it in just a couple of steps but it always gets there i think four is as long as i've seen it take the thing is this could be improved uh, just because it always gets a tree with the shallowest long branch it doesn't mean it picks the word with the highest probability of getting to the right answer in the shortest number of steps so if you'd like to try and improve it you're welcome to here's the link for the source code so you can download it and play about with it yourself if you're not interested in coding and you just want a copy of this app here's a link for where you can download that so thanks for watching